So over the last, I don't know, 15 years, I've probably bought and sold hundreds of various computers, new and old. And ever since I've started my channel, I have featured many, many computers I have found on various auction sites or gotten from recycle centers or just literally found in dumpsters. And if you've been watching, you know that like 90% of those came with a working hard drive or an SSD with all the files and installation intact. I also very often get scrap drives in lots just on their own and the reason I do is because I can always use them for one of my projects, be it a vintage computer or a slightly newer one. And having a bunch of spare drives is just convenient rather to have to keep reusing them. And storage nowadays is really cheap, especially if you don't need high capacity drives. I mean these slower SATA drives are nigh on worthless and even a 128 gig NVMe drives are very, very affordable. So people just tend to leave them in when getting rid of their old rigs, either because they, I guess, don't bother taking them out, just not worth it, or they genuinely don't understand the dangers of leaving your unprotected data for someone else to find. And I'm in no way a data security expert, I'm just a guy who had dozens and dozens of scrap hardware on his bench over the years and the amount of unprotected data I have found is just staggering to me. You might have seen the video where I managed to boot off of a random drive some guy left in the trash and not only was it not password protected but it had an active Google Chrome profile left on it with a bunch of saved passwords. I have also seen people leave their signed documents, personal photos, emails, correspondence, videos and god knows what other forsaken private data that I'm sure no one ever intended for anyone else to see. And the reason I sometimes come across it is because especially with older hardware I get in unknown condition, it's just easy to boot the thing up with the existing drive just to see if it works and sometimes it's just a pain in the ass to reinstall the OS and sometimes it's even impossible because it's an older device without USB or with a broken optical drive or something. And also sometimes exploring the installation helps me understand what the thing did in its past life and where it came from. For example that mechanics thinkpad with a bunch of cool card diagnostic software. And I have gotten all sorts of concerned comments under my videos from people hating on me for even plugging the drives in to daring to boot off of them. But most people were of course concerned about people not protecting their data in any way. And I have seen all sorts of comments and ideas about how to securely delete or format the drives, everything from just deleting the files to running a drill bit through it. And honestly, even though I did have some experience with data recovery, this was a subject I was really interested in testing myself. I have done some research and reading up on what method is the safest, but you know what? I always find that actually trying things out for yourself is not only the best way to learn, but it also gives you first-hand experience and I always learn something new. So hey, why not play around with a couple of test drives I have? Let's try seeing just what it takes to get the data off them completely and what exactly can be recovered from drives with casually deleted or formatted data. And for this test I've decided to use some scrap drives I've either pulled from computers myself or just gotten in random lots. Some of these came from people online, random auctions or my buddy the recycler. I have a couple of hard drives and a couple of solid state drives I would like to test and these are essentially two most popular ways of storing data in a modern computer. Most people nowadays use solid state drives for their OS but many still use hard drives for long term storage and offloading their larger files. And I'll be using a simple SATA to USB adapter and these things are very common and idiot proof which is great in my case, you know. However in some cases I had better luck with this externally powered old icy box and I mean this beat up old gal is probably older than some of you guys watching the video but it just kind of works and like I've said sometimes I had issues with drives not getting enough power through USB alone especially for mechanical drives. Anyway, I've decided to start with the mechanical drive and I'm just going with a small laptop form factor but they're pretty much the same as the bigger desktop drives in the way they store the data so whatever conclusion we come to is true for both kinds. And we're going to be plugging it into my second MacBook here with a little USB-C adapter and please don't plug drives of unknown origin into your computer because you don't know what sort of nastiness, viruses or other crap it may contain. But given how this isn't my primary computer and it's not connected to my network, I have no issues hooking it up. For these purposes, I'd suggest using a computer you don't care about, the one that's not connected to your network, or you can also use a virtual machine if you care to bother to set one up. 
Anyway, we don't really care about what's on the drive because what we're interested in is how to prevent someone with ill intent to access whatever is on it after say I want to sell it or give it away or just get rid of it. Well, aside from just accessing what's on the drive, we'll have to use a recovery tool of some sort that looks for deleted data. And I was very fortunate to have the folks from EaseUS get in touch with me and offer to collaborate on this video. They're pretty much the go-to for anything to do with data recovery, backups, restores, partitions, security, and other utilities that help you manage the safety of your devices, data, and files. They have software available for both Mac and Windows, and as you'll see, they're very easy to use. If you ever accidentally deleted a file or formatted a drive you didn't intend to, yeah, a piece of software like this can absolutely save your life. They also have software for recovering data from a mobile device and they regularly have awesome deals on their website so why not check them out using a link in my description. And let me tell you as a small YouTuber their help really does make a difference. And you can also try out the free version to make sure it works as it should. And yeah the best way to see that is just to use it and that's what we'll do. You can see that if I go to the search for lost files button, you can see that it just keeps discovering gigabytes upon gigabytes of various files for us to peruse. And well, we're not going to do that since these aren't my files, but what we are going to do is actually something that most people, I guess, don't even bother doing, which is, you know, just a quick format. And even though there are specialized apps you can download, I was just curious about the utilities that come built in the OS. And in my case, that's Disk Utility. And I was curious as to what results can we expect from it. So I did just a quick erase and I format and in just a couple of seconds I had a nice clean drive with seemingly nothing on it. Great. But of course it's not what's actually happening at the bit level and for purposes of this video I'm not actually going to go into all the details but if you're interested in that I'd suggest watching Theo Joe's video on the subject. I've learned a thing or two I didn't know for sure. But in layman's terms erasing the drive or even just erasing files from your computer, putting them in the trash and emptying it, just lets the system know that the space that used to be taken up by the file is free to be overwritten. But until the data is overwritten it's actually still available for us to recover. So when you do a basic quick format it doesn't really remove anything from the drive, it just gets rid of the metadata notion that the space is occupied and it tells the system that you're now free to put something else there. So if you have special recovery software like the Ease US Recovery Wizard, it searches not only the files that are marked as not erased by the metadata, but you get access to all the files currently present on your drive. And we can indeed see that this drive contains pretty much the exact amount of files as there was prior to me doing the quick format. So until that data is all written, yeah it's still all there. But there is of course a way of getting a more secure solution and again whether on Windows or Mac OS you will have an option of secure erase which will give you this little slider to determine how many times you'd like to write over the erased data. And as you can see we can rewrite it as much as 7 times which is what I chose to do for my particular hard drive. And you might wonder what are we rewriting the drive with and the answer is with zeros. Yeah this basically zeros out the drive before doing the final erasing session so that all the sectors and bits get not only marked as empty but actually get rewritten and properly replaced by some other data which is then marked as unallocated free space. And I mean this worked great. After the disk utility was done I ran the recovery wizard again and I was unable to recover any files whatsoever. It came out completely blank which is awesome. The only problem was how long this took and I mean it took hours and it's only a 160 gig drive so I can't imagine doing like an enterprise multi terabyte NAS drive or something especially if you're doing it through USB like I am. So I was naturally curious about doing a smaller amount of rewrites, like I tried doing just two, and I put a video file on my drive, just a 70 meg file, and after that I've erased the drive and rewrote it just twice, and yeah, I didn't get any data creep, couldn't recover anything at all once I scanned it, just like after zeroing it for freaking 7 passes. Now the way data is actually stored on the hard drive is what makes it technically possible to maybe recover once it has been rewritten since there could actually be a magnetic charge still present and detectable on the platters. But if you're not wanted by an FBI agent I mean chances of recovering that data are as far as I understand it nigh on impossible. 
Now, I don't know whether doing just two passes makes it more susceptible to... I don't even know what. <laughs> but I'd feel pretty safe even doing just that. And frankly, unless you're super unlucky and some weirdo decides to go snooping super deep in your discarded hard drive... I mean, even a casual format would do the job in my opinion, but it honestly doesn't hurt to go just this extra step since it really doesn't take long, and if you're not formatting drives by the dozen a day, it's a good thing to get down as your IT hygiene routine, just zeroing the drives you're formatting at least once. That's what I'll be doing from now on anyway, since it's just a good habit to develop either way. Now, a lot of people say that if you really want a peace of mind, you're best off just taking a hammer to that old drive, or better yet, a freaking half-inch drill bit. And while I do agree to an extent, I mean, if I really had some incriminating evidence or something that could put lives in danger, I mean, I might as well destroy it and sleep tight. But on the other hand, I mean, I can hardly stand people just tossing out working electronics, let alone destroying them on purpose, even though there's nothing wrong with it, and it could go on working just fine for years, being being used and appreciated. It's like hitting your child to teach them not to do something, it just kind of feels wrong and primitive and destructive, like what am I, an ape? Also hitting the thing with a hammer, like how hard do you hit it, where should you strike it, you know so many questions and drilling through it, I mean if you don't have a drill press and a metal drill bit on hand, that could actually be pretty freaking inconvenient. So, in the name of science, I've decided to see just what it takes to destroy this drive beyond usability, so that we can hopefully all learn something as much as it hurts me to do so. And no, I'm not bashing its brain in with a hammer, rather I'll show you what you can actually do with a dead drive, and I'll start by doing something that you should never do if you want to see your drive work ever again, and that's to take it apart. And I have actually done this to dead drives before, and that's because you can actually get quite a bit of useful stuff from them. Lifting up the However, you can see that we have a spinning platter, quite beautiful indeed, along with the reed heads. And people say, oh, just take off the little controller board and that's it. But you can actually take one from a different donor, as you can do with the reed heads and other parts, which is what those freaking recovery magicians use to get your data back from dead drives. And holy crap, watching those guys do their work is honestly like black magic to me. Super impressive. You can also take out the magnets, which we'll do in a minute, and they're pretty strong neodymium magnets, great for all sorts of purposes. But before doing that, I wanted to see just how fragile these platters are. And I was told just opening up a hard drive in a non-dust-free chamber is actually enough to have them stop working. So I'll test that. I'll just quickly close it back up after having it open for a little while. And after hooking it up again, I could see that the data was in fact still present and perfectly readable. So I haven't done enough damage. That being the case, I'll open it back up and I'll give one of the platters a nice little smudge with my greasy fingers. And that felt so wrong and yet so satisfying at the same time. And sure enough, after hooking the thing up, it already had trouble reading. I could hear the heads just knocking their asses off, struggling to find data under that grease spot I left. And it eventually just gave up and the drive wouldn't show up at all, even in my special utility. So if it was my data I wanted hidden from the FBI, I would just scratch the platters to be sure it was never found. And I'd take the magnets and stick them to the fridge. And one more thing I've learned while doing this is that not all screws used in the hard drive are ferrous. As you can see, they don't stick to the magnet. Probably because they don't want them getting magnetized and interfering with the data flow. Cool. But again, this just felt wrong on so many levels and I don't really think there's any need to go this far with your drive. And if you have the time to spare on zeroing the thing at least once, yeah, that would be my go-to method of keeping the data safe. And the drive itself wasn't happy getting destroyed too. I mean, listen to the poor thing cry. Mmm, sweet music to my ears. Now, I was also curious about the SSDs, since they store data in a fundamentally different way. Not on magnetic platters, but on flash chips, and it's also not stored on tracks and sectors. I mean, it kinda is, but it's also kinda all over the NAND. 
And well, again, I don't have the time to go into all the details, even though the data is stored completely differently, there is something akin to the table of content, telling the computer where and how data is scattered across the NAND. So the software, again, just searches for the indexing pointers to see where the data is stored, whether it's marked as deleted or not. And so I've done a couple of things. Uh, first, I've tried something people probably do all the time, which is just deleting a file from the drive and then emptying the trash, which, you know, should be enough for most people to think that their data is gone forever. But I had no issues recovering that file, and not only did I recover it, but the video file in question was also fully playable. Afterwards, again, I did a quick format, but I was still able to recover many of the previous files, including the video file in question, even though, interestingly enough, it was a different process, since when I was searching for files on my HDD, it pretty much found the video file immediately, I guess because it was closer to the outer tracks where the heads begin to seek, while on the SSD I had to wait for the entire scan to be finished and cataloged before actually seeing all the files. Anyway, after that I zeroed the drive for two passes and yep, couldn't find anything at all after that. I'll again refer back to the black magicians who do professional data recovery, and I mean perhaps there are ways in which they could recover whatever charges are left lingering after rewriting the drive, but for all intents and purposes, yeah, I'd consider the data on this drive wiped and gone. And since this SSD was faster than a hard drive, it really didn't take that long, like 15 minutes. So I'll repeat, it's a great practice to adopt if you want to keep your data safe. On the other hand, that practice can bite you in the ass if you accidentally format something you didn't intend to erase, in which case, yeah, you're hooped. So that's the lesson I've learned today about data security and recovery, and even though it's nothing really mind-blowing or unexpected, I was still very happy to test out some of these things for myself because, you know, that's the best way to actually learn something. And again, if you need data recovery software, I'd highly recommend EaseUS, it works great, and I'd like to thank them again for helping me out with this video. And if you learned anything from this video, well, that's great. Perhaps you'd like to see some of my other videos on all sorts of tech subjects. I do stuff like this every week, on computers new and old. I do repairs, reviews, retrospectives and similar things. If you'd like to support what I do, you can follow me on Patreon for just one buck a month or more if you'd like. You'll get early access to my videos and I usually have a couple of them lined up for my Patreons to watch and comment first. If you'd like to chat with me and other users, you can join our Discord server. All the links will be in the video description. Thanks and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.